whether you're the student and especially you know you're a student and you're a teenager you 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 understand who you are and you have you have found a voice and you should be able to share that voice into an IEP meeting it may not always go your way I that happened with me where I you know, I was always that guy who wanted to just blend in with everyone else. So if an accommodation made me stick out, I didn't necessarily want it. And I would state my objections, but it would be decided it was for the best of me. So you're not always going to be, i say not listened to. You're just listened, you're listened to, but it's just not always agreeable to what you say. But still, wouldn't you rather speak out and have that stated rather than just... Um, not speak out and eat your words and just let the frustration and well, I mean I guess teen inks is kind of like a thing for anyone for every teenager anyways it so. doesn't happen to a teenager it happens to all the other teenagers just not that specific teenager um, I think it's a good point I think it's important that students participate in your IEP meetings I think it's important that students contribute to your IEP meetings you don't have to come in with a pre-type paper you don't have to come in with 15 different ways that teachers can do things different than you. But if you have an idea, if you have something that you'd like to contribute, if you find that the, the teacher giving you a copy of closed notes, for example, is really uncomfortable because they make sure to say, Johnny, come here, let me give you your notes, and you don't want to be pulled out, called out like that, you can explain in the IEP meeting, can you put them off to the side and I'll just go get it, and I'll, or I can pick it up on my way, on my way in the classroom. Or there's, is there something we can do to make this less obvious, even if I'm still getting the support? The supports are thought about, they're considered. If you think that there's something that maybe you don't appreciate, that's definitely something to bring up. Uh, the teachers, the parents, everyone involved is going to do what they feel is going to be best. You're an active part of the team. It's about you. I say speak up. And the final thing that I, there's one other point I want to highlight because I feel like it's a really good point. We just talked about that. We've been talking about the IEP meeting. Rebecca just went through that entire form that you work on filling out. Just because you fill out the form, you sign it, and then the, the, the next academic year gets on its way or however whenever you sign it the academic year is on the way if you find there needs to be a change as for a you know a parent you can especially I Rebecca you'll be able to tell us who like because you, you can request for a change and then have that you know follow through that process who should if a parent feels there's a need for a change in the IEP who do they contact and basically what do they say? That's a really great point. Um, IEPs are legally required IEPs are legally required to be written to be rewritten once a year. However, at any time any member of the team can say, you know what, I don't think something's working here. I think that we should meet, we should discuss if an amendment should be made, if there's something that needs to be adjusted. If a parent or a child finds that there's something that maybe they're struggling with or they see that isn't working, it would be a good idea to contact the intervention specialist who is probably going to be in charge of writing the IEP so that they can discuss what's going on, see what needs to be done, and if they'd like to go forth with a full team meeting, I would just make sure that the request is done in writing. That way, if someone um, wonders about the date of it, it's something that's easily documented. That's the best way to go just because sometimes memories get fuzzy and then you have a documented um, request on your hands. Is there anything else that you would like to add before we sign off here? Um, the only thing I would say is that I know that there's a lot that goes into an IEP. There's a lot that goes into an ETR, which is the document that's the basis for writing the IEP. And I know that it's something that I went to school for. It's something that it takes a while to understand. If there is a question that you have about something that the intervention specialist or a teacher or someone just kind of skims over because they're so used to talking about it that they forget that some people aren't that familiar with it stop them ask them hey you know you mentioned this and I don't understand what that means would you mind explaining that for me this is a document about your child or about you depending on who's watching this um, 
it's entirely okay to make sure that you understand what's written on this document. It does not have to be all Greek. Little Greek, not all Greek. Great. Well, again, thank you for joining us and for sharing the document. And I, I hope for someone out there watching, obviously, if you've gotten to this point, this has been helpful or it's, you're going to find a, that information was something you were looking for. So I... I hope this is I hope this has been helpful to you and until next time take care all right